special edition of Knicks Fan TV presented by Manscaped. CP the franchise in here. Special guest. You guys asked for him, and we delivered the newest member of the New York Knicks. Number 13, Evan Fournier is in the building. Evan, how you doing, man? Welcome to Knicks Fan TV. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. It's, it's a pleasure to have you on. Definitely appreciate you giving us the time. And uh, once again, welcome to the team. Sure, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, man. Before we get started, I want to once again salute to everybody in the chat. And when we usually have our, our guest spots, our guests on our show, we usually do a hashtag in the chat. So tonight's hashtag, we're going to do a hashtag 13. So throw a hashtag 13 in the chat to salute Evan Fournier. And if you guys is from France, everybody watching from France, throw your flag in the chat to salute your fellow countrymen. All it's right. a little late right now in France, though. Yeah, it's a little late, but they're, they're in here, man. Trust and believe. They're definitely here. So, um, anyway, you know, Tuesday was, was a big day for you, man. I feel like, you know, no one does these press conferences better than the Knicks and you had the press conference on the floor the tour of the Empire State Building what was your first day as a New York Nick like well I mean it was my first time being a free agent so it was my first time doing a press conference like that but uh, I didn't know what to expect and uh, they did it big man they did it big they had they had Fadjo in there that was fun uh, we went to the Madison you know they uh, they had all these uh like posters with, with my face on it and, and Kimber's face on it. They had these, you know, huge boards on the Madison Square Garden. Uh, and yeah, it was a nice introduction. It was nice to uh, meet the guys, meet the coach, see Leon, see Scott. And, uh, and I feel like it was a good first step, you know, to, uh, to feeling what it's like to be in the Nick, you know? Uh, absolutely, man. What was the... You know, you had always said in, in previous interviews that you had always wanted to play for the Knicks. You know, what specifically appealed to you about the team? Was it the, the, the team itself, the organization, Madison Square Garden, the fans? What, what specifically made you want to play for the Knicks? Well, let me start by saying, uh, I'm sure you guys have heard that a lot. You know, uh, when you play, I mean, when you are such a big organization and when you have, you know, guys getting traded or free agents, you know, everyone is like, yeah, I'm, I couldn't wait to be here. And I've, I've always wanted to be a native of the club, you know, because, uh, because it's a big market and, and, you know, guys enjoy playing in big markets, but, you know, French fans can actually back me up on that. I've been saying that for a long time and uh, it's not just because I signed here, you know, I'm not the type of guy that's, that's going to say something just because it's going to make people happy. You know, I'm, I'm like, I know you guys don't, don't, don't know me well enough, but I try to always keep it real. And when I said that, you know, I meant it. And uh, I meant it because multiple reasons. First of all, uh, you know, I can remember my first time playing against the Knicks when I was a rookie back in Denver. Mm. And just, it, you know, it was, it was my, my first time at the Madison. And the team was good back then. They had Melo, they had uh, J. Kidd, they had Chandler. And we got whooped by, I think, something like 20 or 25 and the garden was rocking and it was like, man, this is a fun place to, you know, play. And, you know, you get to go home, you're in New York, you're in the city. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's a dream, you know, uh, it's on the East coast. So it's really close to friends. And, uh, and, you know, there's, there's just history. There's just history. Uh, it's a competitive, competitive uh, city. I really enjoy the the mentality there. You know, it's uh, it's a little bit uh, it's it's tough. It's a tough environment. You know, and I uh, I enjoy that. It, it reminds me a little bit of Paris because it's such a big city, and the pace of the city, the energy, you know, all that. So, uh, like I said, I've always wanted to be a Nick. So now that you know I am, I have to uh, make sure I stay a Nick for a long time. So you know, I have to play well, and we have to win. Yeah, absolutely, man. Evan, um, I'm not sure if you have any headphones handy. I know the people in the chat are saying that because my audio is coming out of your speakers. Do you have any headphones nearby? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Okay. Give me a second. All right. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for your boy. Just going to get a little audio adjustment real quick. CP here. Evan Fournier, the newest Nick. Let's get that thumbs up button. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And uh, we'll, we'll get those audio issues corrected 
Uh, who we got in the chat going right now? We got a sizable chat, a couple super chats coming in. Lloyd Barker Rock Jr. says, uh, Welcome, Evan, to Knicks Fan TV and Nation. We are a crazy bunch of fans, but we support our teams and players to the fullest. Let's go. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna work on the echo, and then uh, and then uh, continue on with the interview. I appreciate for everybody for coming in for sure. Who else? We got super chat from Ari. He says I'm in the Zoom meeting, can't call in. I'm gonna hold you accountable for any able one. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask him that what he what he gets back. Oh, you gotta ask him that what he gets back. All right. All right. Let me see. Yep. Give me, give me one second. Mm -hmm. So you guys couldn't hear me or something? No, we we could hear you. Uh, but there was my audio was was echoing through your iPad, so we're seeing okay. if, if you had it on headphones, it, it could prevent that. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Let me see. These headphones are actually brand new, so hopefully they work. <laughs> uh, sounds good. Sounds good. Test, test, one, two, three. Yep. yep. Echoes going. You good. Yeah, we should be good to go. All right, sounds good, man. All right, back at it. CP Evan Fournier here. Salute to everybody in the chat once again. Um, so, so Evan, when you know you you got the call that the Knicks were interested, what was the the pitch from management? You know, Leon Rose, Scott Perry, Tom Thibodeau. What, how did they try to sell you on the Knicks, and and how did they view your role with the team? Well, this year was a little special. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Good to go. Yeah. The um, this year was a little special because uh, you know free agency was so late. I was right in the middle of the Olympics, mm -hmm. and you know I was I was you know when I do something I do it hundred percent. And you know I told my agent, listen, uh, I, I, I mean I know there's gonna be calls. I know there's gonna be a lot of uh, things to handle, but I'm focused on the Olympics, so mm -hmm. I don't want to hear nothing about free agency until it's actually like the deadline and and we have like offers on the table like red you know so i actually did not talk to anyone uh prior to the deadline you know and the deadline was uh in tokyo it was at like something like 3 a.m so i was definitely sleeping and it was the day of the quarterfinal so i was mm. you know <laughs> i was not trying to hear anything that day i think yeah. i was you know i was lacking on my game and uh but, you know, I, I told my agent pretty much uh, what I was looking for as far as, you know, the role, uh, money-wise. Uh, I mean, pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. And um, he he had, a, you know, a bunch of calls with, with Tim. So he was the one receiving information from, you know, co the coach. So Tibbs, Leon, Scott, all these guys. And, and you know, the day before, he, he pretty much told me, okay, so... Uh, I, I think we're going to have uh, this offer from that team and this offer from that team, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I told him, well, you know, you know me, uh, you know what I want, you know where I want to play. Uh, if everything works out, uh, you know, just shoot me a taste in the morning. So when I wake up, I know what my options are and we can, you know, just go from there. And so I woke up around like 8.30ish and... And, you know, we, we just decided to go with the Knicks. And right after that, you know, we had a call with Tibbs and, and Scott and Leon. And so the process for me was actually really easy because I didn't have much to do. Simple and plain. You wanted to be a Nick and, and your agent made it happen. That, that's a great story. Um, <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's interesting. Now, you know, the team played very well last year. 41 wins, four seed in the East. Did their progress have anything to do with your decision? Or, or were you, you know, pretty much set on coming here either way? No, for sure. I mean, you know, uh, the perspective of, of, of playing for a team that's, that's going to get better and better uh, is everything. You know, you, you want to be a part of, of, of something special. You know, uh, it's my, I mean, it's going to be my 10th season in the NBA. You know, uh, I've had good seasons. I've had bad seasons. Uh, it's always better when you win, man. You know, it's, 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 you know, you have more fun. Uh, you wake up every day with a sense of purpose. And, and, you know, you want to accomplish something, you know, uh, we all play this game to win. And so there's obviously only one team that, that wins it all, you know, the, the, the championship. But, 
you can still, you know, try to accomplish something even though you don't win the championship and, you know, getting better and better. And I mean, obviously, you know, the Knicks having a good season last year played a huge part. Uh, Tibbs played a huge part. You know, I, I'm really looking forward to play for Tibbs. Uh, I feel like in a lot of ways he's, uh, he's similar to Coach Clifford. Yeah. Uh, I played for him three years in Orlando. And I just enjoy those type of coaches, you know, very disciplined, very hard on players, tough-minded coaches uh, that are going to keep it real with you. And uh, that was, you know, Tibbs played a huge part in me coming to uh, Mark. Yeah, you know, Tibbs and Coach Clifford come from that Jeff Van Gundy coaching tree. So, uh, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. yeah, yep. hard work defense certainly is a common trait. Um, speaking of defense, you know, the Nick defense is really something that caught a lot of us by surprise, even the fans. You know, they were the top five defense for most of the season last year. As an opponent, when you played for Orlando and Boston, seeing those Knicks, what impressed you about their defense? Uh well, I think the number one thing is that they did not make mistakes. Hmm. Uh, they did not foul you unnecessarily. They did not uh, go under on the shooter. Like, they, they knew the game plan extremely well, you know? And so everything you had to do was was hard. And when you had to score, it was it was an earned basket. They, they rarely, rarely messed up the coverage or, or something like that, you know? And then, you know, they... They obviously have guys that can guard. Uh, they have length. Uh, they have athleticism. Uh, they have good good rim protectors. So I, I think it's a it's a combination of a lot of things. But mostly it's, it's because they were disciplined and organized. Man, uh, sometimes you know it, it's 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 just that important. Yeah, honestly, I agree with you, man. Just watching all 72 games of this team and, and seeing them play under previous coaches, as you said, they rarely missed an assignment. It was rarely a blown play. You know, previous years, you would see guys kind of pointing at each other and, and kind of mm-hmm. cross-communication. But this year, they seemed very disciplined. And uh, there was just chemistry. There was a sym- uh, uh, symmetry there uh, on, from the defensive standpoint that, that was really impressive with them. Well, I mean, you know, a lot of that is just coaching because, yeah. you know, I've, I've had, I mean, I've had six, six coaches now and, you know, when, when things are very clear, like when you know what you have to do, you're going to do it because you want to be on the floor, you want to win, you want to, you, you know, you want to play well. So when things are easy to understand and things are clear and there's not too many gray area, that's when you can really, really understand, you know, the the team concept and just do it. And whereas when there's gray areas, you know, you mix up the coverage every other week and, you know, you, you try something, you, you know, if it doesn't work, you do something different and then you change it again. You know, that's where it kind of gets confusing for players because, you know, you're not sure what to do and you don't have uh, that confidence in what you're doing. And so it, 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 it becomes more complicated. So, you know, uh, it was the same for us, you know, with, with Clifford. When he first came, uh, we instantly became a good defensive team, mm. uh, 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 team, and we had the same players. So, you know, I know what what it feels like. So, I give you know the coaching staff a lot of credit for that. Interesting, indeed. Now, now, two players on this team that really took a big step were uh, number one, Julius Randle, you know, 24, 10, and 6, all-star, most improved player, and R.J. Barrett, who really took a leap in his second season, uh, and most likely you'll be playing in, that, in, a, in the starting lineup with those guys. Um, how did you, what was your impression of those guys as an opponent, and then how do you feel like you'll fit in with these guys in, in the lineup? Well, Julius was always a good player, a guy that could score. Uh, but he definitely took a step this year. I feel like he's really found uh, he he really found his his rhythm within the season, uh, and a little bit like the defense. You know, when you know um, where your shots are coming from, at what spots, and and you know the the different looks you get, then you become more and more comfortable, and you become more and more efficient at it. So uh, he. Had a great season, uh, scoring the ball. He was really aggressive, uh, very physical player. And for the first time, you know, you saw him being like a leader, like really carrying his team and and enjoying it. Like you could tell he was a leader and he was having fun. And and the guys, like everyone was, was following him, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to play with him. He's actually an extremely good passer for shooters as well. So hopefully, you know, I'm going to have fun with that. 
And, uh, you know, RJ, well, RJ, you know, is the second year player who took a huge step this year. I mean, obviously, you guys know, shoot, shooting three for him was, was huge this year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, last year, teams uh, was really, I mean, two, two years ago, his rookie year, teams were really playing him as a driver and going under every pick and roll. So he kind of messed up the whole the whole offense. I mean, not the offense, but the spacing. Mm-hmm. And so this year, he was, he was shooting the ball really well. So... Uh, I remember uh, Danny Angel was like, he had five threes. What the hell? <laughs> you know, w- when we played against them, and uh, he, I, th- I, th- I mean, I think the kid is 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 driven. The kid wants to be uh, a really good player, so he works, and you, know, you can tell he's he's very physical. And for his age, he has that maturity already. He plays with force. You cannot speed him up, and so he, he had a really good season. And obviously, he's going to get better. Yeah. Yeah, well, well said, man. Definitely agree. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP, Evan Fournier, the newest Nick in the building. Throw a hashtag 13 in the chat to salute Evan. And to all my people from France, throw your flag in the chat. Let your countrymen know that you are in here representing late night, late night, past midnight in France right now. So, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, ab- absolutely. Well, uh, speaking of 13, Evan, what made you pick 13 as your number? Oh, it was a little bit by default. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> ten, 10 was obviously taken. Yeah. Uh, then my my second choice was 15 because that's my wife's number. Mm-hmm. She used to play basketball. Mm-hmm. It was also uh, you know up up in the rafters. And so from there, you know, I had my uh, my my dear 94. But I don't know. It just didn't feel right. Um, just so you guys know, it's, it's 94 because that's that's my area in Paris. So it's pretty much my district. The number of my okay. district. So, you know, I'm kind of ripping my, uh, you know, my town a little bit. But sure. I don't know. It just didn't feel right. Uh, it was my number in Boston and, and in Denver. But I just wanted a new beginning. So I said no to 94. And then uh, number seven, because that's the day uh, my son w- was born. But, you know, I, I didn't want to take Melo's jersey. Uh, okay. <laughs> so like, respect, no. respect. Yeah, respect, respect. Uh, 20 was taken. And so I went to 13 because that was uh, that was the number I had when uh, I turned pro with a 17 year old. So you know, I, uh, it's a it's a cool number. I feel like it's it's a number nobody really wants. You know, you never yeah. see a like you never had a 13th floor in a hotel or or seat number 13 in in the plane. So I kind of like that. The fact that it's a number that no one wants. Yeah, you know? I mean, he's not running from the smoke, man. Not not scared of the number. Hopefully, it brings you some good luck. With, with exactly, yeah, exactly. Absolutely, man. Um, let's take a call from the fans. I'm going to go to my guy, Will from LI, has a question for you. Will, how you doing, man? Hey, how's it going, CP? And shout out to Evan Fournier. Welcome to the New York Knicks. How you doing? Good, man. Appreciate you. How you doing? Good, 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 man. First, I want to say... Um, um, Welcome to the Knicks. Uh, we're def- just like the, one of the earlier callers said, um, we're definitely crazy over here about our players, but uh, we always got your back no matter what. But I had a question for you regarding your Olympic um, uh, playing for your country of France. Um, what are the positives and the negatives, if any, about playing in the, in the Olympics versus um, having a regular offseason and having time to yourself? Thanks for, thanks for the call. Oh. Just, we just lost right. Evan. Thank you. All right, hang tight. We just we lost just lost Evan's uh, video, so hang tight. So to everybody in the chat, once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Little technical difficulties. We, we lost Evan on the Zoom. So we'll just wait for him to come back. Okay, here he goes. Here he is. All right, we got Evan back. Hello? Yep, good to go. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. Okay, all good. All right. Yeah, so so Will's question was was um, you know yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember. You want me to say it now? Yeah, mm-hmm. ready to go. Sure. Mm-hmm. All right. So the the good thing about playing FIBA, so whether it's Olympics or European Championship or World Championship, is that you know you get to play five on five basketball, high intensity. You get to uh, put to practice what you did, you know, during the the off season, your, your individual work. But uh, more than that, I think it's, you know, as a player, you want to, 
you know, have big games and, and, and play big games with, with a lot of intensity, you know, high pressure games, uh, like semifinals, quarterfinals, all that, because that's really where you get better. And that, that's the highest level possible. You know, when you play against Team USA in the, in the finals of the Olympics, there's nothing uh, better than that, you know, as a player. So um, that's definitely the best part about it. And... The bad part, I would say, is that um, sometimes you can come back to your team a little bit tired, and you know it's obviously an 82 season game, so it's uh, it's very demanding on your body, right? Yeah. So you know you really have to be careful of, of what you eat, how you sleep, how you recover, and, and and do all the treatment because, I mean, there's something every summer, right? So you 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 can really uh, not have any summers off at all. You know, uh, I think I only had like three weeks this year. Mm. So I'm going to have to be extra careful with, with, like I said, how I recover and all that. Because, I mean, to me, that's that's really the only bad part about it. But again, the, the good versus the bad, is it's no question. You know, I'm, I'm going to play every summer for sure. Yeah, so, I mean, we, we have about a month until training camp, so do you figure you're going to take yep. it easy between now and then, or do you plan on getting up with, with the guys? I know Julius usually works out with a couple of guys in the off season. What's your plan? Well, uh, no, playing? no, that, that, that's the thing. There's, there's no way I can just, you know, jump in without doing anything. So, yeah. uh, right now, t- today is the 19th, so the final was about 10 days ago, so... Uh, I did, didn't do anything the last 10 days, uh, you know, just rest and enjoy my family, uh, enjoy Paris. Uh, I'm going to chill uh, for another two, three days. And then I think on, on Monday, I'm going to start being active again. So I'm going to start lifting for sure. Maybe doing a little bit of cardio, some light stuff. Uh, like I'm, I'm not running because I don't want to put pressure on my joint, but maybe, you know, just rowing or biking or some stuff like that. And in another week, I'm, I'm thinking about, um, you know, just being back on the court, just touching the ball, uh, going up and down the court, just working on my scales and stuff, uh, because you gradually have to work towards, you know, training camp. You, you don't want to start training camp uh, without, you know, doing anything for a month, yeah. you know? Yeah, I- interesting indeed. Um, I want to go to the Discord. We're going to go to France. My guy Tom from the French Knicks podcast has a question for Ooh. you. Tom, you're, you're live on the Discord. Go ahead and unmute your mic, and uh, you're live with CP and Evan, man. Tom, Tom on the Discord. Tom going what? <laughs> All right, Tom. Dave, I'm going to put Tom back back in the lounge. If you if you um, get back to him, just tell him that uh, that we're waiting on him. Let's go to Fredo in the Discord. Fredo, you up next. Fredo, how you doing, man? Hey, what's up, guys? How you Evan, doing? Evan, good to, good to hear from you, man. Uh, I just want to wish you a healthy and a successful season. Thank um, you very much. Thank I also want to tell you that the two things that Knicks fans love are hard workers, which obviously you are. Another thing, other thing that we love is um, a player that likes to come to New York and take on the challenge. Sure. A lot of players duck New York, and to hear you say that you wanted to come here, I know that's going to make a lot of Knicks fans happy. Uh, the only, yeah, thank the only, you, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome, man. Thank you too for for choosing to come here. Um, the only request that I have, and I know all the Knicks fans are going to agree, is. We need you to come up big for us against the Hawks, man. They've been talking- <laughs> <laughs> they've been talking- it, 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 I mean, it became talking- a rivalry in just one one playoff series. Huh? That fast, man. It became a rivalry that fast, and, and now we got Christmas Day against the Hawks, and you know they oh, they, know, they, they know. started I up. A, about it. They started up a Hawks fan TV, Evan. Two two months ago, they started up a Hawks fan TV. Now we're going back and forth on Twitter. So Christmas Day is going to be very interesting. At, at, uh, it's actually good, I think. You know, it's it's good for the league to have yeah. to have you know rivalries like that, even if it's you know brand new and, and fresh out the box. I, I mean, I think it's good. Like just watching you guys play uh, that series, you know, you could tell it was a little bit of a uh, it, you know, electricity. I would say so. You know, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to uh, to be a part of it. Uh, yeah, absolutely, man. And speaking of rivalry, 
You know, there's a, there's a team in Brooklyn, man. They, they got these three guys over there. They're trying to take over the city. I don't think they're going to be able to, but, you know, you, you got a chance to see those guys in the playoffs, man. And in, in game two, you and KD got, got into a little skirmish, man. What, what was that about? What, what did he say to you? <laughs> it wasn't much, you know. It was – it was uh, to be honest, I don't even remember what he said, but I know I was upset. Uh, you know, we were down 20, so I got mad, and, you know, we just talked back and forth. But really, there, 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 there isn't much to it. You know, it's, it's not necessarily personal when you get upset like that. You know, you're just being competitive, um, and you don't want to, you know, back down from anybody. So, um, you know, I'm a guy that, 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 you know, I play with a lot of emotion. And so uh, during the game, you know, uh, I I do talk if you gonna talk to me. I I rarely gonna start it, but you know you can you can count on me to 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 definitely fight you if there's you know uh, like an altercation or you know something. And it just happened to be KD, but really there there wasn't much to it. You know? It's just one of those things, heat of the moment, right? Un- understood, understood. Well, listen, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sure. yeah. Well, look, Knicks fans will, will definitely, you know, love that that you know that dog in you in that fight. So that that's good to hear. Um, one more call in in the uh, from the fans. Let's go to Papa Left. Papa Left, what's going on? Yo, CP, this is your best Evan. Uh, shout out to Evan Roberts, but I think <laughs> this is your best Evan uh, guest you've had. Salute, um, bro. appreciate it. Yo, Evan. Evan Fournier, um, I just want to say that picture with your wife and your son, your son looks priceless, bro. He looks like he just crossed somebody up, and he's looking down <laughs> at their lifeless body. He's about to shimmy and hit a three in, in your name, so hopefully we can get him a legacy contract in, in about 15 years. Yeah, hopefully, um, man. Who knows? Who knows? But, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to say, uh, my question was, you know, you, you spoke on how you came into the league and the Knicks had Melo, Chandler, and Amare. And um, for the majority of your career, the Knicks have pretty much been, you know, a media laughing stock of the NBA. And now with, you know, Tom Thibodeau, Leon Rose, the culture and the perception has changed. I just wanted to know, moving through FIBA, moving through NBA locker rooms, how much is that a real Um, tangible thing like how much is that perception of the Knicks being the the you know the the laughing stock of the NBA through the media and how much uh, has that if it that is true how much of that has changed um, whether it be in the magic locker room or whether it be through your own personal relationships in the NBA and obviously with with team Mm -hmm. France and then um, uh, and just a reiteration of, of what other callers are going to say. And what I said to uh, Matt Grimes, Quentin Grimes' brother, is we love defense and we love timely shots. You know, and, and more than timely shots, we love defense. You'll always have a good game in our hearts when you play defense. So that's, right. that's what I got to say. And much love to you, Evan. Thanks for coming to New York and enjoy being a Nick. It's going to be a time of your life, bro. Appreciate you, Pop. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate you. So to answer the first question about uh, – you know the Knicks uh, the last few years. Where I I kind of disagree with you when you say you know the the Knicks were the laughing stock of the NBA. Uh, at least not for us players. Uh, you know there's there's a, you know I'd say every year there's like five or six bad teams. Uh, it just happened that when you know you're the Knicks and you're part of those five to six bad teams, you know the media they talk about you, but it. it I guess it's just a part of, of being such a huge franchise and, and and being a big market. But you know, for for players, we don't necessarily look at that. You know, we still have to come in, play the game, win. Whether you're a bad team or you know a good team, we don't necessarily look down on anyone because we all know, you know, any night, you know, you can lose against anybody. And and so uh, in the locker room, really, it was just, okay, we are playing the Knicks. Uh, they are really good this year, but, you know, we still have to beat them. You know, we still have to show up. And, you know, especially me being, you know, in Orlando for a while, like, we were a bad team as well. So once we, we became pretty good and, you know, we made the playoffs uh, with, 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 with Cliff, there was definitely no sense of, you know, entitlement. Like, oh, okay, we're going to play the Knicks. We're going to win. No, not at all. Uh, you still have to show up. You still have to do your work and, and win. But... I would definitely agree that um, this year things was different. You know, uh, when the Knicks came in, 
you knew that they was going to play extremely hard, that they were tough having defense. So everything, you know, was going to be hard. Uh, everything was going to be contested and, you know, you're going to have to earn everything. Um, but, you know, the goal is to be better and better. So you go from, you know, being a bad team to being, you know, an elite team on defense and, and being the fourth seed to become, you know, an elite team on the Eastern Conference. And so you want to have that, 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 that you know, you want teams to fear you a little bit. Uh, you know, it, it was not there, you know, last year, but hopefully with, with our work and uh, our consistency, you know, we can get there hopefully. And, and he also mentioned um, one of the family members of, of our rookies. Not sure if you got a chance to see the Summer League, but Knicks fans also optimistic about some of the rookies that we have. You know, Quentin Grimes, number 25th pick, and uh, Miles McBride was pick 36th. Um, as a veteran, what type of wisdom do you, do you feel like you'll impart on those guys? How, how do you feel like you'll be able to help them move along as rookies with this team? Well, as a vet, you don't want to overwhelm young players with, with information, you know, because first of all, they have to figure it out by themselves first. Like they have to see what works and what doesn't and what type of, you know, uh, role they're going to have. And uh, I think it's it's good to let them uh, uh, learn by themselves a little bit first, you know, and, and really you can, you can talk to them once they, you know, are open to conversation, you know, uh, it really depends on, on on each and every player, how open they are. But uh, I think leadership is, is interesting when there is exchange. You know, it's not me, I know everything, and you don't. You know, like even from a, a rookie, you can always learn something. You know, you can, yeah. you can learn from everyone. And uh, uh, me being, you know, a 10-year player now, like a veteran, uh, I plan on helping those guys, you know, uh, by uh, by leading by example. You know, some, something that I've always done. Uh, I'm the type of guy, you know, I don't talk a whole lot. Uh, when, when I say something, it's because I mean it and I feel like I have to say it. And, you know, uh, I do my work. Uh, I try to lead by example. I always practice as hard as I can. And, you know, I always, you know, uh, try to be... Yeah, like an example for those guys. And so yeah. once they are open to a conversation and, and they want to know more, then I can help them. Uh, but I'm not going to come in and just say, okay, you need to do this, you know, because I feel like it doesn't work that way. Got you. Uh, you know, ten, 10 years in the league, is there is there an aspect or an area of your game that, that you feel like you want to, you know, work on or continue to get better at? Of course, you can get better at, you know, everything. Uh, I've taken a huge step actually those last two years at, uh, at shooting the three after the dribble. Uh, it's something that I've really gotten better and better. I think I was shooting uh, almost 40% from three after, uh, after the dribble, which is pretty good. Uh, and so I have to keep getting better at that. I have to keep working on my mid range after the, the dribble. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about adding a little post of game in, in like one or two years. Uh, because as you get older and older, you know, you try to maximize your effort. And so if you can get buckets, you know, in the low post, you know, you can save a little bit of energy and, and, and save your legs. So that's, that's definitely something I'm, I'm interested in. And it, it certainly seemed like, you know, it was an, an area that the Knicks were looking to emphasize in terms of upgrading the team. When you talk about bringing you on, um, bringing back Alec Burks, you know, Derek Rose, drafting Quentin Grimes and Miles McBride, um, certainly seems like, you know, that area of shot creation was something that the, that the Knicks were certainly looking to prioritize. Yeah, no, no, you're right. Uh, the, the, the three ball was not a strength for the Knicks last year. Uh, and so I feel like we've, we've the additions uh, of myself, of, of Kemba, of, you know, the rookies and, and, and the returning players, I feel like it's going to help uh, RJ and I feel like it's going to help Julius because they are very physical guys that enjoy getting to the rim. And so, you know, obviously when you play with shooters, well, it kind of opens up the floor. So uh, it's going to be our job to, you know, uh, be there for them, open the floor for them and, uh, and, 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 and make shots that simple. 
No, no question, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Once again, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. CP Evan Fournier here. Throw a number 13 in the chat to salute Evan. And uh, for my people in France up late night watching, throw your flag in the chat to salute your fellow countrymen. Evan, we got over 2,000 fans in here watching live. So, uh, hey, man, Knicks fans, we're definitely looking forward to this. Definitely uh, appreciate your time. And uh, as I told you about the show, we were talking before we went on, you know, uh, the show's really picked up steam and, and gained popularity. And one of the figures yep. that has, uh, has you know, you know, increased the popularity of the show is my guy, Jay Boogie. So I, I, he wanted to come on and congratulate you. He's a fan favorite. He calls in at the end of each show. We call him the closer. He calls in win or lose to, to give us the, the okay. sermon and keep it positive if we lose and, and, you know, turn it up a notch if we win. So I wanted, wanted to let you talk right. to Jay Boogie. And Jay Boogie, go ahead and uh, salute Evan Fournier, man. Salute, salute, salute. Three capital S's. Love and respect to everybody in the chat. Appreciate you all. This is a big time moment. This is a big time situation. This is, this is what we've been working on and living for. This is what we've been waiting and living, living for day by day, time by time. Evan, I appreciate you coming over here. Respect for you, man, becoming your first time free agent. That's big. And then you picking the Knicks. That's even bigger. We got one. Finally, somebody came and signed with us. That's because we've been doing the right thing. I heard you got off the flight and the E hopped in the van and the van went to the garden. They signed my man, Evan. Love and respect, man. And look like you and CP, y'all both having a battle with the beers. Appreciate you. <laughs> See you game one of the season in for Boston. We got something for you, Boston. Let's go. <laughs> Jay Boogie, the you, closer. That's, that, you, Jay Boogie. Yeah, that, that's my guy, Jeff. That's my guy, man. All uh, right, so all right. Salute Come to Jay mark. Boogie. So uh, it, what, what else is on your New York to-do list, man? You were looking for a barber. Uh, I think you got about 1,000 recommendations for a barber, so you should be set there. A anything else? Uh, is there a bucket list for New York that you have planned? Yeah, I shouldn't have said that about the barber, man. I'm, 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 I'm getting messages all day. Like, I, I, I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, my bucket list in New York. Uh, honestly, I've done a whole lot already. Because, uh, you know, my wife and I used to hang out in New York during the summer. And we even spent two uh, all-star breaks in New York. So we did a whole lot, you know, all the touristic stuff and, and, and everything. Um, Honestly, it's it's more about just experiencing the city on a day to day basis, like living like a guy from New York. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because it's different when you come to New York for a week. You know, it's 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 different than when you live there. So I'm I'm really more excited about uh, hanging out, uh, going to restaurant, going to bars. Uh, you know, ha having a good time with you know my son and my wife. Uh, this this. Just a day-to-day -day routine, really. Uh, that's that's really what I'm most excited about. True indeed, man. Well, listen, man, we're definitely looking forward to it. The city is it will definitely embrace you. They're excited to have you here. The fan base is energized. And, uh, you know, just stay healthy, stay safe. And, and we wish you the best of luck, man, in this season. Great great job as well, uh, Evan. Thanks again for joining us. All right, CP. Us. Thank you very much, man. Appreciate you. All right. So to everybody in the chat, once again, Evan Fournier joining us. Thanks again, Evan. Take care, man. Thank you. T take care, guys. All right. There we go. Salute, salute, salute. What do you guys think, man? Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Evan Fournier. Great job, man. Great job. Great interview. Appreciate everybody for tuning in, for supporting. Everybody who called in with a question, you know, that, that was a lot of fun, man. Definitely appreciate that. And uh, thank Evan for his time as well. Let me read some of the Super Chats that have come in. Over 2,000 in here for the Fournier interview. This is 6 o'clock Eastern time, man. Come on. Number one show for the fans by the fans. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Let me read some of the Super Chats that have come in. Eric Nefron says, crush that likes, hit the thumbs up button. Paul Collins, welcome to the Knicks, just kill the New Jersey Nets. That's the super chat. $20 super chat. Will from LI says, OMG, I'm freaking out that I got to ask Evan Fournier a question. Is this real life? This is Knicks Fan TV, people. This is Knicks Fan TV. It's what it's all about. Connecting with the players, 
connecting with the fans. And, and that's what we do, man. If you guys are new in the chat, throw a hashtag new in there. Welcome to all new viewers, wherever you guys are tuning in from, wherever you, you're watching from. So to everybody from France who stayed up late to watch. Hopefully you, you enjoyed it. We had a little technical difficulties earlier, but uh, we worked that out. So once again, thank you to Evan Fournier for joining us. And hey, maybe, you know, hopefully this, this won't be the last Knicks player to come through and chop it up with the fans on Knicks Fan TV. I thought that was a lot of fun. Regular Joe sends a super chat. He says, hey, Evan, thanks for accepting the challenge in New York. Um, you had a question there. You know, I, I try to, you know, get to everything, but just in the interest of time, he had a de had a delay, you know, he, you know, he had he had a long day. So I was just being respective of the time. So I was trying to get to everything, the calls and and uh, and, you know, get my questions and get the super chats. But I, I appreciate everybody for for donating. Uh, Russell Whiskey says uh, Hall of Famer Clyde Frazier is at is at every game is having going to pick his brain. And you, you would hope so. Uh, Eric Nefron, we'd like you, Evan. Welcome to the Knicks. Ayo, hey, pal, sends a super chat, pal. Thank you very much. NY Dad once is uh, number 13. Welcome, Evan. Salute. Evan, so glad you signed with us and super excited that you always wanted to play for us. Jean Marc for, uh, sends a super chat. X about Frank. <laughs> Cynthia Wolf, uh, thanks for super chat, Cynthia. Angelo Carlo, uh, welcome to the Knicks family. You want my loyalty when you clap back at that fan by saying KD needs a better barber. <laughs> Keep that same energy in New York. This season, we're going to go. We're gonna love you for it. So, Angelo Carlo. Sam L. sends a super chat. He says, Evan, you, you, uh, who are some of the unsung guys on the Knicks? You excited to get in the gym with? Well, we, we talked about Julius. We talked about RJ. He, he definitely talked them up. I was very impressed with RJ's second season. Talked about how he would impart some wisdom on the young guys as well. Got to be legend says a Costa Rican cologne, 5,000 colognes. Says, thank you for signing, Evan. And, and he had a question for Fournier as well. Jalen Julius sends a super chat. Says, welcome to NYK, Evan Fournier. I'm already a fan because you roasted Katie's hair on Twitter. <laughs> Chunk Norris sends a super chat. He says, my guy, Ev, we're going to kill these foes. Paris is definitely like New York. Let go. You better remain the same killer in the garden. 914. Y.O. Let's go. Shout out to Jodino. Sends a super chat. He says, can we get Evan's best year? <laughs> Uh, Lloyd Barker Rock Jr. Appreciate the super chat. Ari, appreciate the super chat, man. I, I I was hoping you would have gotten a call in, but I'm not sure what happened there. And yeah, man, that that's the story. Eddie SFL says Knicks Fan TV, the number one show for the fans by the fans. Huge fan from Palm Beach, Florida. Great interview. Yeah, where were you guys uh, viewing this show from, man? Throw your cities, type your cities, type your country, or or throw your flag in the chat. Let us know where you guys were checking in from. And, uh, and and I'll shout you guys out. Let me refresh this page. Salute to uh, the rest of the donations. Next show will be Sunday. Special guest, my guy Puma. Diehard Knicks fan. Uh, also known as the Black Ink Crew. Creator Black Ink Crew on VH1. My guy Puma will be coming through. We'll be talking Knicks. And we're also, for, for those of you before you guys go, remember the RJ giveaway. RJ 40K giveaway. We're going to announce the winner on Sunday, we're giving away an autograph, R.J. Barrett basketball. Go to KnicksFanTV.com to sign up. Sign up is free. Just go to KnicksFanTV.com. You'll see the landing page and sign up the 40K giveaway and autograph R.J. Barrett basketball. Iconic TV says shout out to number 13, Jean-Claude Van Slam, CP for Governor NYK all day. Yeah, the governorship is wide open right now, man. I might have to... Uh, I might have to jump in the race. The fan base got my back, man. Might have to. <laughs> Eric Defrod says, Viva Le Fournier. Appreciate that. Blarns Tears, Freezy. What's good, Freezy? Says, great job, CP. Top-notch work again. Keep setting the pace, bro. Nick's forever. Freezy, appreciate you, man. We got Illa checking in from, from Toronto, Canada. Joel checking in from Seattle. Appreciate that. We got L.I. in the building. No Dice 414. Elo Eloise Thomas, how you feeling? Yeah, man. Detroit basketball in the building. Vin T. Robert Paris checking in from France. Bodega Mayor, what's going on? We got Lochte Walker, Victoria, Australia. Appreciate that. Yeah, man. Definitely appreciate 
everybody for uh, calling in, tuning in. And like I said, the next show will be this Sunday, next edition of Knicks Fan TV Live. So definitely hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you again to Evan for joining us. And yeah, man, the fan base is energized. The fan base is, is, is juiced. You know what I, what I got for Fournier? He's not going to back down, man. He's a tough guy. He wanted it. He wanted that orange and blue jersey. You know, we always appreciate that, as Jay Boogie said, as Papa Left said as well. And so I think he's going to be a fan favorite quite early, man. He's a guy that works hard, leaves it on the, on the court, understand what's expected of him. You know, coming from that Clifford system, which is similar to this Tibbs system, which is that, you know, that Van Gundy style. So he definitely understands the expectations here and knows that his coach is going to is going to demand a lot for him. So I think Fournier is going to going to fit in uh, quite seamlessly with this team, along with Kemba, RJ, Julius, just health, man. Just as long as they can stay healthy. I feel like this team could 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 make some noise. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Definitely see what happens. Shout out my guy Dave, Super Dave, as Jay Boogie would say. Dave, great job. TM, great job. All the mods in here. Eric Booker, appreciate you. Jeremy Maynard, appreciate it. Thanks to all the mods who help out all the time. Mr. Chill sends a super chat, says Richmond VA in here. Thanks for doing this. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. TN. TNT Neil 17 says salute Knicks fan TV CP love what you're doing long time listener and Knicks fan in South Carolina South CAC stand up appreciate that man I got Freezy in here let me make sure I didn't leave any uh, super chats no super chats left behind JJ great interview JJ appreciate it man thanks for tuning in TM says he's an actual upgrade. Yeah, I believe so. I believe he is an upgrade over Bullock. So uh, I think this offense will, will get a much needed lift. All right, I got uh, Russell Whiskey and my dad won. I got all of those. All right, I think I got everything. So as you guys know, these shows are presented by Manscaped, number one men's grooming tool below the waist. And they're shipping worldwide, people UK, France, Singapore, Europe. So make sure you guys go to manscaped.com, enter promo code NYX for 20% off plus free shipping. Go get the lawnmower 4.0. It is the Ferrari of ball trimmers. Trust and believe. Check out the performance package 4.0 as well. They got great deals. As I said, 20% off plus free shipping with promo code NYX. Go to manscaped.com. And they, they will take care of you. If you guys missed the show on video, we'll be running the replay. Shout out to the replay gang if you guys are watching on the replay. And also, uh, the show's available in audio podcast format. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon, Alexa, Stitcher, all the major podcast platforms. So, can't miss it. Knicks Fan TV's everywhere. Number one show for the fans, by the fans. CPS Franchise, I'm out of here. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks again, Evan Fournier. 